So were the first masses in crypts or caves or were they in homes or were they at the Motel 6? I'm Tom Bodet, and we'll leave the lights on for you. I'm really Deacon Nick, and our last video, we talked about when the Catholic Church started, and we gave some, some descriptions of the Mass and showed how similar the Mass was in the year 100 or 155, I think is more specifically what we talked about, to how Mass is today. Well, today we're going to talk about where the first Masses were held. You know, I've heard they've been, they've been held in crypts, and they've been held in caves, and they've been held in homes, and really those are all true. And it varied a lot uh, until Emperor Constantine made Christianity, Catholicism legal. And then masses started to be held more in homes. And slow, soon after that, the first official like buildings were put up, right? But for the first three centuries, it was rough. So the answer is yes, they were in crypts, they were in caves, they were in homes. And it varied a bit from place to place. Some places were policed a lot more. Some places it was safer to have a mass than it was in others. Um, there's, you know, there's a Pope that they walked in and they killed him right there and the deacons that were with them during the mass. So really they hid the best they could, right? But they still knew the word of God had to be spread and they, they died for it. So it's another one of the reasons that I believe so strongly in Christianity and Catholicism is that so many people were willing to die for these beliefs. And not just us hundreds of years later, thousands of years later, but the people that lived at the time and, and that knew Christ, that knew people that knew Christ, they were so solid in their beliefs that they were willing to just die for it. Anyway, I'm getting off topic like I tend to do, I must say. So let's get back to the churches. The safer it was, the more likely they were to be in houses and stuff. But um, some of the first masses, once they were more legit, well, let me read this first. This is from Acts of the Apostles. And it's kind of, I won't say controversial, but they're not sure if Acts was written closer to 50 AD or closer to 80 AD. But this was written between 50 and 80 AD, I think it's safe to say. And some of the first masses were held in Antioch, and it's described in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 11. Some of them, however, who came from Cyprus and Cyrene, went to Antioch, where they started preaching also to the Greeks, proclaiming the good news of the Lord Jesus to them. The Lord helped them, and a great number believed and were converted to the Lord. The news of them came to the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas out to Antioch. There, he was glad to see her himself, that God had given grace, and he urged them all to remain faithful to the Lord with heartfelt devotion. For he was a good man, filled with the Holy Spirit and with faith, and a large number of people were won over to the Lord. Barnabas then left for Tarsus to look for Saul, and when he found him, he brought him to Antioch, and it happened that they stayed together in that church a whole year, instructing a large people of people instructing a large people of people, instructing a large number of people. It's right here, Nick. It was at Antioch that the disciples were first called Christians. So that's a little bit of trivia there for you. So we know that in the year 55, we had mass. And my last video shows that, and you should check it out if you haven't watched it, you should also go down there and subscribe or up there or wherever it is and hit that little bell and click the like button. It's a nice thing to do. But if you haven't watched that, you should watch it. It talks about how similar the Mass was then to the Masses that we have today. So Saul and Barnabas pretty much were the preachers for the most part at this first Mass in Antioch, at the first church in Antioch. Um, but it was founded by Peter, and it's called the Grotto of St. Peter. And you'll see in this picture here, it, this was a cave for the first couple hundred years. So like from the year 55 till the year 300 AD, when they um, could come out of a closet, so to speak, it was a cave and it was about 21, uh, I think it was like 21 by, I figured it out, wait, that was in meters. It was about 40 foot, it was like a 40 foot circle of a cave. It had about a 20 foot ceiling from what I read. And it was just a cave. It was a hidden cave where they had mass at first. But then if you see in this picture, the outside part, the outside part there, it was added in somewhere between 300 and 400 AD 
to honor it as one of the first churches in history, right? I want to show you a picture that I found online by Monsignor Charles Pope. By, it was actually with an article that he wrote about the first homes that these were done in. And it says the houses were rather sizable with central courtyard or large room that permitted something a little more formal than mass around the dining room table. I used to think that the masses were very, very informal. I, I just pictured eight or 10 people, like a group of friends there breaking bread, saying prayers together. But it tr turns out that that really isn't true. They didn't just sit around a little table at all. They were very formal. They stood and sat and kneeled formally like, like we do today. Catholic calisthenics, that everybody faced in one direction. Everybody faced east. God is to the east, and God is the origin of the light, and that's where the sun rises in the east. But if we look at this picture, in the drawing, you can see the layout of an ancient house church, and it used to be called a Domus Dei, House of God. And this was actually based, this picture was based on a, a third century house that they excavated in Syria. And if you look at it, the assembly room is to the left, and then there's a priest or bishop up, fr up front conducting a liturgy, and they were facing east. The houses were built facing east, or first early churches were built facing east. And there was an altar against the east wall. And if you look on the right side, you'll see what they called a baptistry, uh, where they baptized people. And it was a full body baptism. It wasn't, you know, the pouring of the water on the head like, like we do today. And some faiths still do full body baptisms. You notice in the back there's a deacon guarding the entrance door. The guy looks pretty lonely. I think he's kind of alone back there. But it says that he's there to preserve good order. They were performed in less than ideal circumstances. And there, there's a document that was found that was written about the year 250 A.D. It's called the Didascalia. And here's what that document says about these early masses. It describes them really perfectly. Now in your gatherings in the Holy Church, convene yourselves modest, modestly in places of the brethren, as you will, in a manner pleasing and ordered with care. So these house liturgies were literally, like I said, not informal masses. They, they really paid attention to detail. Let the place of the priests be separated in a part of the house that faces east. And you see that on the left side of the picture. So even in the early masses, the sanctuary or the place where the priest stands, which now is the we call the area up around the altar, it was separate from where the laity or the people gathered. In the midst of them is placed the bishop's chair. And we still have the bishop's chair today. If you go to a cathedral in any diocese, there's one chair that only the bishop sits in. And with him, let the priest be seated. Likewise, and in another section, let the layman be seated facing east, like we already talked about. For thus it is proper that the priests sit with the bishop in a part of the house to the east, and after them the laymen and the lay women. Notice that the men and the women sit separately in these instances. This was traditional in a lot of cultures. And, and until like the last 150 years, I mean, even 200 years ago, the men and the women sat in different places at church. Back to the article, or not the article, this is the letter that we found from the year 250. And when you stand to pray, the ecclesial leaders rise first, and after them the laymen, and again, then the women. <laughs> Better not let my wife hear this. Now you ought to face the east to pray, for as you know, Scripture has it, pray, give praise to God who ascends above the highest heavens to the east. A lot of things that you read say that the early masses were said with the priest facing the people, and then it changed, and then it changed back at Vatican II. But this shows us that even in 1700 years ago, the priest faced away from the people. And everyone faced in the same direction, the priests, the participants, the deacons. Now, back to the writings, now of the deacons, one always stands by the Eucharistic oblations, and the others stand outside the door watching those who enter. It's kind of like a bouncer, right? Um, this is a time of persecution, and the early Christians, they had to be careful who they let in, right? They would only let people into these masses as well who were baptized. So if you wanted to attend a mass, you had to be baptized first. Of course, we don't, we don't do that now, but that's the way it used to be. Um, 
and they call it the Disciplina Arcanus or Discipline of the Secret. Now, like we want everyone to know the word. We want to preach, you know, preach Jesus to everybody. But back then, you know, you could be in big trouble. So afterwards, when you offer, let them minister together in the church. So once the doors were locked and the mass started, they wouldn't let anybody in and out. And the deacon would come in and take their place in the sanctuary. So I hear that if you'd slip them a five, you'd get a better seat in the back of the church. If you're not Catholic, you don't know what that means, but it seems to be that Catholics like try to fill in the back rows first, and the first rows are always empty. So I guess back that was kind of a joke. You give the deacon a five, and he seats you in the back of. I'll continue with the paper. And if there's one, and here's what's written. And if there's one to be found who's not sitting in his place, but the deacon who is within, <laughs> rebuke him and make him to rise and sit in his fitting place. Deacons are strong arms. Also, in the church, the young ones ought to sit separately if there's a place. If not, let them stand. It's kind of like in the Titanic. Women and children first. But it's the opposite. <laughs> Women and children stand. Those of a more advanced age should sit separately. The old folks. The boys should sit separately or, the, or their fathers and mothers should take them and stand and let the girls sit separately. There's a lot of, really a lot of focus paid on where you sit and if you're a boy or a girl. If there's really not a place, let them stand behind the women. Let the young who are married and have little children stand separately. The other women and widows should sit separately. I guess even in the old days, there was a cry room, right? Now we have a cry room where you sit with the little kids. So let the young who are married and have little children stand separately. So, yeah, it's, it sounds like there was um, definitely a cry room. And then, and a deacon should see that each one who enters gets to his place and that none of these sits in an inappropriate place. Likewise, the deacon ought to see that there are none who whisper or sleep or laugh or nod off. Wilbur, I didn't think people slept in church. I'm not sleeping, I'm praying. Uh, maybe it depends on the homily. <laughs> I hope no, 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 nobody sleeps during my homilies. Do you mean to tell me that some of the early Christians slept during church? No way. For in the church... It's necessary, necessary to have discipline, sober vigilance, and attentive ear to the word of the Lord, as it should be, right? So um, so there it is. Scripture tells us that we had mass as early as the year 55. It's described in Acts uh, and a couple of decades after Christ. I would guess even sooner. And then, of course, like, you know, we described the mass here, the building, saw the pictures. In 300, it got more formal. So... What a rich history we have as Catholics and Christians. I'm Deacon Nick. I don't know what my next video is going to be about, but it'll be there. Take care. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.